This is concerning Bronze Age Aegean civilization. So here we are in the Aegean. It's important to recognize that uh, uh, really until modern times, this whole region basically was viewed as the region of Greece. Greek population was a liminal population that lived on near the shore of Asia Minor, modern day Turkey, as much as Greece itself. Very rugged region, as you can see. I mean, well, you can see that, but Balkan Massif. 85% uh, of the region is mountainous, only 15% has arable land and sustained population. So we have a situation where it's accessible by water. Uh, most populations grew up in these alluvial plains near the shore, and that their growth space was limited, their potential for growth, the carrying capacity was limited. As a result, we hear repeatedly of sort of exportation of excess population, migration out. Out migration from the Aegean world was a commonplace in antiquity as much as uh, modern times. Um, uh, it, um, what we know about the, 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 the Bronze Age Aegean world basically begins with Homer and myth, the myth of the Trojan War, if you've seen the movie. Uh, there is this sense that Troy is situated right here at the entrance of the Dardanelles, so the ancient Hellespont, this passageway that goes up into the Black Sea. Why was it important? Because this is one of the main areas, uh, access routes to grain production up on the Crimea, the flat steppes of the northern Black Sea. Another option was Egypt, as we said before, and then the third option becomes Sicily out in the west in North Africa. And these are the three anchors to the uh, grain trade of the Aegean world. Again, Urban society developed here by, say, 800 BC, but it could not really sustain itself without uh, access to uh, production of food uh, from outside. Uh, ancient legend recorded the sack of Troy as a defining moment of pre Hellenic history. Archaeological investigation has produced corroborating evidence of fire damage and abandonment at nearly every Bronze Age Aegean palace complex, circa 1250 to 1100 or 1000 BC. And the main palaces are Mycenae, which is right up in here in the Bay of Argos, a Pylos over here. Mycenae was the legendary home of Agamemnon himself. Pylos of Priam over here at Nestor, uh, or Colmenos over here in Boeotia. Athens, Athens itself has a Mycenaean capital and palace at the top of the Acropolis. It appears to be a Bronze Age site that was never truly abandoned uh, throughout uh, antiquity. So those are three or four of the most important ones. Uh, the earliest Bronze Age urban civilization to emerge in the Aegean was Minoan Crete, on the other hand, which no, it's not on this map. All right, so here is Crete right here. It's proximity to Egypt and the Near East. The inhabitants of Crete appear to have been Near Eastern or West Semitic uh, populations. They may have migrated out outward, and they brought Bronze Age technology to an otherwise Stone Age environment. And we, our records, our traditions, the legendary mythological traditions, are that the king of uh, Crete, Minos, uh, who controlled the Minotaur, uh, basically dominated the peoples of the Aegean through what was known as a phallusocracy or a power or rule by sea. Uh, the people at Crete constructed large palace complexes. More than 15 have been identified on the island. Uh, and they settled colonies on neighboring islands as well as on the Greek mainland. There's a big excavation going on with the American school in Athens right now. Uh, uh, right here on the north coast of the Peloponnesus seems to be a sort of um, um, transition settlement between Minoan and Mycenaean civilizations. Uh, around 2200 to 2000 BC, Indo-European migrations expanded into mainland Greece and Anatolia. So they came not really clear, the Indo-Europeans, maybe from this region here, and they seem to have migrated this way, they seem to have migrated this way into Greece and also Anatolia. In Greece they became known as the Mycenaeans, in Anatolia the Hittites. They also went over the Caspian, came down into the Iranian plateau, and became known as the Iranian peoples, peoples like the Medes, Persians, the Parthians, and so on, and pushed all the way to the Indus. So this is this major Indo-European movement. They also went this way to become the Slavs, and the Germans, and the Celts, and also uh, uh, the Latins. Uh, 
from these emerged the Mycenaeans, their high point was approximately 2000 to 1100 BC, and the Hittites, or 2000 to 1200 BC. Both of these polities assimilated advanced urban culture and technology from neighboring, more advanced civilizations. But they persisted in loosely structured political systems that focused on decentralized warrior bands, with a hierarchy consisting of ranked king among kings. And this is what Homer portrays and seems to be recognized in the remains as well. There was sort of a recognition that among these tribes that migrated, one aristocratic family was recognized as the royal family that would produce the king. But the king was really no more powerful than any of his barons. And in fact, being a king was a risky matter. Uh, people tended to defer to the king during times of emergency, such as migration or warfare. Uh, but then they went back to their sort of decentralized lifestyles uh, and systems uh, after the emergency had passed. We see these kings constantly trying to once they acquired that kind of power during the emergencies to somehow sustain it, and it usually leads, leads to their demise in that regard. But so this is kind of this loose system that's characteristic. As characteristic of the Germanic invasions at the end of the Roman Empire as it is of the Mycenaeans, according to Homeric uh, tradition. Uh, Mycenaean palace complexes display advanced monumental architecture, including Tholos tombs and Cyclopean defensive walls. Finds of Mycenaean stirrup jars, these are short, squat amphors that were transported throughout the Mediterranean. They show up as far away as Egypt, uh, Italy, and as far away as Cornwall in uh, Wales. These demonstrate maritime contacts as far away as New Kingdom, Egypt, Italy, and Britain. Excavated levels, dated to 1200 to 1100 BC, exhibit fire damage at several Mycenaean palace complexes indicating widespread societal collapse. The Hittites, meanwhile, and their capital is Boaz Khoi, which is right up here in kind of the north central Anatolia, also known as uh, Hutatusas, the modern village is Boaz Khoi. A simulated Anatolian native culture and established a royal hierarchy at Hattusas by 1700 BC. From Hattusas and other centrally located palaces, the Hittite warlords established supremacy over a variety of native Anatolian peoples. They controlled local mining production, as well as the trade in metals from abroad. In circa 1600, Hittite forces invaded Mesopotamia and even sacked Babylon, so they pushed this far. They also pushed down into Syria palestine and became a rival with New Kingdom Egypt for control of this important larger region. We know that in 1258, they signed a Treaty of Kadesh with the Egyptians, bringing the hostilities here to a close after the Battle of Kadesh. Um, this treaty survives in a cuneiform tablet, uh, tablet that was found at Hattusas and is now at the Istanbul Museum, as well as in the uh, 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 Royal Archive at Tel El Marna, uh, and is now in the Cairo Museum. A number of indicators, including the Treaty of Kadesh, demonstrate, uh, well, including the Treaty of Cadiz, the destruction level of Troy 7a, which dates the Egyptian Scarabs to 1250 to 1220 BC, the construction of Cyclopean defenses at Mycenaean palace complexes, and the invasions of the Sea Peoples recorded by the Egyptian records by the Egyptians. 1180 to 1069 BC all demonstrate the growing military disturbances, that growing military disturbances and political and social fragmentation was taking place in the eastern Mediterranean basin around 1200 to 1100 BC. Many palaces and urban settlements were destroyed at this time. Almost all the settlements along this swamp demonstrate fire damage at this time. The evidence suggests that the Sea Peoples themselves originated from Aegean population centers. We hear about the uh, Philistines, right? The rivals of the Hebrews, right? Who settled right here in uh, Canaan. Uh, and they claim Kastor, which is the ancient word for Crete, as their homeland. Some sort of universal event appears to have provoked widespread political and social collapse in mass migrations beginning in the mid 13th century BC. Urban civilizations possibly became unsustainable due to their limited levels of technology and the minimal scale of their production areas. A similar pattern of social fragmentation characterized the transitions from Bronze Age to Iron Age settlements in regions as far removed as northern Denmark, 
the Indus Valley, Sub-Saharan Nile River Basin, and even Tajikistan in Central Asia. Again, there seems to be the same curve of population rise and collapse in areas remotely connected to the urban populations that have so, developed here in the Bronze Age, uh, Medi Eastern Mediterranean. A pattern of trade and prestige goods suggests that global, a global world system drew distant populations into the orbit of the core polities of the Aegean and ancient Near East, causing their trajectories, trajectories to become synchronized. Now, to argue this requires uh, reliance on very complex and disputable archaeological remains. So we're just going to sort of suspend the idea for now. But what we're trying to argue here in this, in this course and in this textbook is that as growth and development occurred, part of it is a process of opening up undeveloped areas and turning them into surplus producing areas uh, and connecting them to core urban populations. So urban populations extending their reach to natural resources further abroad, colonizing areas, opening it up. But opening up means clearing natural resources, changing the landscape from you know, natural forests to tilled lands, for example, and then sustaining it uh, over time. And that as other peoples started to produce things that these core regions wanted, at the very least, however remote and subsistence they were in their lifestyles, um, um, they expanded at the basically the same pace and got on the same trajectory. So there's a sense of trajectory of rising growth and then something happens and collapse.